the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Candy Christmas, founder and CEO of The Bridge Ministries, the guest of Councilwoman Karen Bennett. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for the opportunity to lift up your name. God, in such a prestigious time, God, we thank you for every council person, for every district, for every family represented, every home represented. God, we ask you that you would give us wisdom and guidance, Lord, in this meeting. We thank you for a glorious year. Lord, I thank you for the city of Nashville and their kindness to the poor and to the homeless. Lord, I thank you for the volunteer state of Tennessee that have good, godly people that care about the needs of others. Now, Lord, we thank you for this Christmas season and a time to worship your son, Jesus Christ, who came as a babe. We ask you that your spirit would settle down upon this meeting, that your decisions would be made, and that your name would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. may be seated. Without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present during the course of the meeting. Is there a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of December 10th, 2013? If the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? There are no messages from the mayor. Thank you. Next, we will have a presentation by Councilmember Barry. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I invite any of my fellow council members to join me tonight as we celebrate Shirley Blackburn, who is going to join me up here, for her 40 years of outstanding service to the Metropolitan Government for being the director of the Metro Dance Program. And I think we also have some ballerinas that are going to join us. Is that correct? Come on up. Tonight we're recognizing Shirley Blackburn for her 40 years of outstanding service, whereas Shirley Blackburn, the director of the Metro Dance Program with the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Rec, is stepping down after getting the Metro Dance Program through one last production of the Nutcracker. And I think we have some Nutcrackers here, yes? Uh, whereas Shirley is an extremely talented, compassionate, and dedicated individual who worked tirelessly while overseeing a multifaceted program that includes classes and ballet, creative rhythm, flamingo, dance for musical theater, tap, as well as three performance groups, including the Centennial Youth Ballet, the Music City Ballroom Kids, and Metro Park Swinging Seniors, Tim Garrett. And whereas amongst her many accomplishments, she has said she has reviewed dance for the Tennessean for 21 years. She has contributed articles to professional dance publications, including Point Magazine. She served on the board of the Tennessee Association of Dance for nine years, and she has received that organization's Margaret Martin Award for furthering the public image and accessibility of dance in Tennessee. And whereas she studied ballet with numerous teachers of the art, attended summer courses at the American Dance Festival, and the Birmingham Southern College. She completed her teacher's training courses at Canada's Royal Winnipeg Ballet School and Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet and has been certified in the Vagonova, Vagonova method, clearly I did not take ballet, of teaching ballet by John White of the Pennsylvania Academy of Ballet and she currently teaches beginning level ballet for Metro Parks and Belmont University. Whereas it is fitting and absolutely proper that the Metro Council recognizes your incredible 40 years of service and accomplishments, not only for your love of dance, but also for your love of Nashville. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathleen Callahan, who was to be honored tonight too, could not be here. So on behalf of her, I thank all of you for giving us this great honor. It has been a privilege for me 
to work for a department, the Parks Department, that has supported the arts since 1960s um, and still to this day does do so. It's a rarity in a public recreation program to have the arts programming that we do today and I think Nashville is very fortunate to benefit from this. And I have been fortunate to have a job that I loved going to every day. Some days are better than others, but every day I end it with little faces like this, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And because I promised Councilman uh, Stein I would pirouette at the end of this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Next on the agenda, we will take up the proposed amendment to rule number 47 of the Rules of Procedure of the Metropolitan Council. Council Member Duvall. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Now, committee report, please. Council Member Barry. Council Member Barry. A committee Thank report. you. Yes, uh, we have before us tonight elections and confirmations for for the rule change, which is, of course, been withdrawn at the request of the sponsor. Thank you. I would right, like to uh, withdraw the bill. Uh, There's a motion and a second for withdrawal. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed. Thank you. The bill is withdrawn. Next on our agenda, we have elections and confirmations. Without objection, we will take up resolution 2013-946 by Barry and Langster. Confirms the appointment of Marty Dickens to the Board of Directors of the Convention Center Authority. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, the Elections and Commission voted 640 against to reappoint Mr. Marty Dickens. And with that, I would like to go ahead and recommend his uh, reappointment because we also voted 640 against to do that. So I move approval. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And Mr. Dickens is confirmed to uh, the Board of Directors of the Convention Center Authority. Mr. Dickens, if you would please rise. Thank you for your service to the city, sir. <laughs> Next on the agenda, we will take up the consent agenda resolutions. I will read the, um, the bills and the captions, and then we will go to the committee reports. RS 2013-905 by Stein approves a grant from the state of Tennessee to the Davidson County Election Commission for the purchase of a computer, printer, and software. RS 2013-929 by Gilmore and others approves the First Amendment to the amended ground lease between MDHA and the Nashville Union Station Hotel, LLC. RS 2013-930 by Stein appropriates $4,736,300 from various undesignated fund balances to Metro Nashville Public Schools, the Police Department, and the General Fund of the General Services District. RS 2013-931 by Stein appropriates $9,031,500 from the General Fund Revenue, uh, General Fund Reserve Fund, for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various metro departments. RS 2013-932 by Stein and others approves a grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Office of Emergency Management for Homeland Security Preparedness Activities. RS 2013-933 by Stein and others approves a grant from the State Department of Transportation to the Metro Police Department for Enhanced DUI Enforcement Patrols. RS 2013-934 by Stein and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Metro Police Department and Tennessee State University for extra duty police services. RS 2013-935 by Stein and Pardue approves a grant from the State Department of Finance and Administration to the Metro Police Department to fund a pilot program to provide services to victims from high crime areas. RS 2013-936 by Stein approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Metro Police Department for, for participation in the Child Exploitation Task Force. 
RS 2013-937 by Stein approves an intergovernmental agreement between the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives and the Metro Police Department for reimbursement of overtime salary costs and other related costs. RS 2013-938 by Stein approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Berry Hill Police Department and the Metro Police Department regarding the use of the Tennessee Incident-Based Reporting System. RS 2013-939 by Stein and Maynard approves a cooperative agreement between the Metro Health Department and TriStar Summit Medical Center to provide a worksite pod for licensed medical employees and other licensed medical professionals to distribute antivirals and antibiotics in the event of a public health emergency. RS 2013-940 by Stein and Maynard approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the State Department of Health for employee tuberculosis exposure testing services. RS 2013-941 by Stein and others approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and Mars Pet Care U.S. Incorporated to provide food for animals in Metro Animal Care and Control and to promote adoption efforts for those animals. RS 2013-942 by Bennett and others approves an application for a transportation enhancement program grant from the State Department of Transportation to Metro Public Works for construction of sidewalks along Hart Lane. RS 2013-943 by Hunt and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation and Metro Public Works for safety improvements at the intersection of Brick Church Pike and Chesapeake Drive. RS 2013-944 by Westerholm authorizes Martin Corner General Partnership to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1100 Fatherland Street. RS 2013-945 by Stein authorizes the Department of Law to settle the personal injury claims of Ana Mora Munoz, Christine Garcia and Ruben Garcia Ariago against Metro government in the amount of $19,000. Are there any of these that need to be pulled? Councilmember Duvall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe 929 needs to be deferred by rule, does it not, based on the analysis? It's okay. A am I correct or? Um. It was signed on Friday, so it's it's okay. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I did leave one off. I apologize. We want to get RS 2013 947 by Tigard. Request the Davidson County delegation to the Tennessee General Assembly to support legislation to charge a ticket tax for events at the new minor league ballpark at the Sulphur Dell site. Councilmember Tigard? Yes, if you could pull 931, I have a brief comment to make about one portion of that bill, please. All right. All right, we'll go to committee reports. Uh, Councilmember Stein. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. On 905, 929, 930, 932, 933, 934, 935, 936, 937, 939, 940, 942, 943, 945, and 947, Budget and Finance Committee approved them all 10 4, none against. Thank you. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Federal Grants Review Committee approved 640 against. Thank you. Councilmember Blaylock. Health and Hospitals was four for it and zero against. I, for, could, you, could you list the numbers? Do you have? I don't have the paper you do, so let me look it up. Hold on. It's, it's 939, 940, and 941, 
and all of those were four in favor, none against? Correct. Thank you. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Plan and Zone and Historic Committee uh, approved RS 929, RS 944, 1040 against. Thank you. Council Member Pardue. Public Safety approved 932, 933, 934, 935, 936, 937, 938, 604, 605, 4, 4, 0 against, and on uh, 603, that's Councilman Mitchell. If those, those are going to be on second reading. All right. Thank you. Council Member Dominic. Thank you, Speaker Pro Tem. On, on regards to RS 2013, 942, 943, and 944, the Public Works Committee approved four, four, and zero against. Thank you. Council Member Barry. Thank you, Chair. With all committee reports in, I move approval. There's a motion and a second for approval. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bills are passed uh, on consent. Now we will go to RS 2013-904 by Stein and Pardue. Uh, provides compensation for special judges presiding in Davidson County General Sessions Court. Councilmember Stein. Move approval with a brief comment. There's a motion and a second. Councilmember Stein. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the compensation of special, special judges presiding in General Sessions Court. Um, the statute, the state statute, allows local legislative bodies like ours by a resolution with a two-thirds vote, so it will require a machine vote and 27 votes, to authorize the payment of compensation to such General Sessions special judges. These are not the regular magistrates and such. These are folks that sit for judges um, and currently when they do that, um, they do it without compensation. Our General Sessions judges have come forward and asked us to authorize um, paying those folks for the time they spend. Um, it actually um, is sort of a precursor to what they believe is going to be state legislation that's going to put together a pool that might not necessarily benefit us in Davidson County, and they believe this is a step towards ensuring uh, that things are done the way we want to do it in this county. Um, I would also say that they have outlined that this is covered within their current budget, um, whatever expenditure there will be, but there will clearly be some budget implication um, for next year and years going forward, and I ask uh, request approval. Is the motion properly seconded? Council Member Duvall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to clarify uh, something that uh, Councilman Stein mentioned about state legislation. If there's something coming forward with state legislation, whatever we pass will be superseded by state regulation, would it not? I, I believe the thought is that if Davidson County has something in place then when the state legislation is filed, the um, judges will, will have a, a um, argument that Metro should be exempted from that state legislation since we already have something in place. But the state legislators can determine whether there's a grandfather clause or not. Sure, it, yeah, we could be preempted, but this is a, a step to try and head that off, if, if I understand the judges correctly. Well, should we wait and see what the state passes? I, I Are we trying to get out in front and spend money that we don't have to spend or may possibly be uh, uh, be funded by the state in some way? My understanding of the state legislation, which hasn't been filed yet, you know, they're not in session yet, is that there would be a fee on all cases in general sessions that would be assessed, and that would go to pay for a pool of general sessions judges that would go around the state. So... Metro, because we have such a high number of cases, would be supporting that pool more than everybody else. So we would basically be paying for judges to go sit special in other counties. So the, the intent is for them to go ahead and get out in front of that and, and have this uh, authority in place. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. I didn't see any reason to pass something when we turn around. It's going to be changed by the state in January, February. 
Thank you. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, we will move to a machine vote. Madam Clerk, would you please open the machine? Has everyone voted? Madam Clerk, would you please announce the vote? 34 yes, zero no, no abstentions. And the bill is passed. Now we will go to RS 2013 931 by Stein, appropriates $9,031,500 from the general fund reserve fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various metro departments. Council Member Stein. Budget and finance approved 10 4, none against. I move approval. There's a motion and a second. Council Member Tiger. Thank you. I won't take but a second. Several weeks ago, Council Members, I promised you that most of the time you heard me, it's going to be talking about fiscal matters. Yesterday at Budget and Finance, there was an item, uh, $724,000, which was moving metro offices from one office building over to the Parkway Towers. And during the line of questioning, it was determined about half that money was for technical related uh, computer lines and cables and whatnot, but the other half of that was furniture, fixtures, and equipment. And my question that I asked at that point was, had we consulted the Sheriff's Department and their Community Service Division, as many of us do in our districts or throughout the city to help nonprofits and others on similar type uh, obstacles like this, had we consulted with the Sheriff's Department and used their resources and saved the taxpayers money? And the answer was no, we hadn't. And the reason was that they probably were too busy to do so. Well, in conversations with John Taylor and others in the Sheriff's Department today, they reconfirmed their willingness to help save the taxpayers money at any and all chances that they were offered. So I just wanted to call your attention. We all need to vote for this bill. All the departments need the rest of the money. But this was a lost opportunity, whether it saved $1,000 or what portion of the 300-something thousand dollars to move tables, desks, furniture, carpets, and whatnot uh, that the taxpayers would not have to bear and could have been used theoretically for other more meaningful projects within each of your districts. So I just wanted to call this to your attention and I would challenge each of us to more thoroughly look and urge our department heads and all facets of, of government. I just joke with Mr. Bernhardt sitting up there about his move, and he says he was given a box and was told he had a truck he could move his own office when he moved, and I, and I thanked him for his contribution to save the taxpayers' money, and I'd like to do that for other departments in the future. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, there's a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without objection, we will consider all bills on first reading in one vote at this time. Is there a motion to pass all bills? Aye. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? And the bills are passed. Bills on second reading, BL 2013-580 by Councilmember Tiger amends the Metro Code pertaining to the mailing of stormwater fee bills showing a zero balance or a credit. Councilmember Tiger. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Domini. Thank you, Speaker Pro Tem. Um, the Public Works Committee moved to defer indefinitely four and zero. Thank Mr. You. Pro Tem, I would move to defer indefinitely with a brief explanation. There is a motion second. and a second to defer indefinitely. Councilmember Tiger Had a very productive meeting, as council members will recall. I was worried that we were sending out unnecessarily uh, dozens, hundreds, perhaps thousands of bills to folks that had a credit or zero balance on their stormwater fees in discussions with uh, Mr. Potter and officials of his department. They are going to come up with a procedure in the first quarter 
to allow folks to opt in. That is, if you want to receive a bill and show you have a credit balance, you will tell them that you want to have that bill. Otherwise, they will discontinue sending that. So I'm confident that this new system will uh, save the taxpayers money and meet the goals. So that's the reason for the indefinite deferral. There's a motion properly seconded for indefinite deferral. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is indefinitely deferred. BL 2013-603 by Councilmember Mitchell amends the Metro Code pertaining to the regulation of small outdoor music events on commercial property. Councilmember Mitchell. Uh, yes, committee reports. Councilmember Moore. At the request of the sponsor, uh, he uh, acted to defer one meeting. Councilmember Pardue. At the request of the sponsor, I asked to defer one meeting. Thank you. Councilmember Mitchell. Yes, uh, I'd like to give a few brief comments on this. Uh, what this Would is, you make your motion first? I, I, I move to defer for one meeting. There's a motion properly seconded. Councilmember Mitchell. What this is pertaining to is we have a lot of, in the summertime especially, a lot of uh, outdoor music events that currently cannot occur in Nashville, Tennessee. They can occur if you close down streets and you do it in, in the streets. But if you have private property, say you have a restaurant and with a large outdoor area, you can't have a outdoor music on your property right now. So uh, this bill is intended to take Music City off mute. Uh, you know, this city of music We've shut down several of these events in the last uh, last summer, especially, and there was we can do spot legislation in certain areas to correct this over and over again. I brought this legislation so we can all, as a body, try to discuss the best method going forward and and get something comprehensive for the entire county. So over the next few weeks, if you would try to take a look at this. We know we're going to have to increase the decibel levels as well as the attendance levels of this piece of legislation. But if my colleagues would take a look at this, try to see if you can make it better or you just may be opposed to it altogether, and that's fine as well. But if you'll take the time to look at it and just see a better way that we can do this to make music able to happen in Music City USA because right now we've shut it down in a lot of these restaurants and a lot of private property in Nashville, Tennessee, and I think we need to do something about it. So with that being said, I move for my one meeting deferral. There's a motion properly seconded for a one meeting deferral. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of one meeting deferral, please vote aye. Those opposed? And the bill is deferred for one meeting. BL 2013-604 by Councilmember Claiborne amends the Metro Code pertaining to the noise from buses parked near hotels and motels within the Commercial Attraction Zoning District. Councilmember Claiborne. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilmember Moore. The uh, Codes Fair and Farmers Market voted 7-4-0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Pardue. Public Safety voted 4-4-0. Four, four Thank you. Councilmember Clyburn. Thank you. Uh, I would move approval. Councilmember moves approval. Is there a second? Sure. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-605 by Councilmember Stein amends the Metro Code relating to other passenger vehicles for hire. Councilmember Stein. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Garrett. Convention and Tourism approved six and zero, sir. Thank you. Councilmember Harrison. Traffic and Parking approved four, four, and zero against. Thank you. Councilmember Pardue. Public Safety approved four, four, zero against. Thank you. And Councilmember Stein. Budget and Finance approved 10, four, and none against. I move approval with comments. There's a motion properly seconded. Councilmember Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the council. This bill does two things. The first, it creates a new formula for establishing the base fee for livery service. It reduces that fee from $45 to 
a fee that is no less than three times the rate of a taxi cab. In this instance, it would be $9. That's the first thing that it does. When we passed the livery regulations back several years ago and we put the $45 fee on and all of the safety requirements, I believe we were acting in good faith. We have now had time and experience to realize um, that that number is simply too high. This bill does nothing, nothing to reduce any of the other regulations on limousine service in this county except to reduce that fee, that rate. The second thing this bill does is it requires a prearrangement with livery either directly or through a concierge or guest service using internet technology. For those of you that know me, there's a certain irony to me having anything to do with technology since I am so technologically impaired. But this service, which is prevalent throughout the country, allows folks in Davidson County and those that visit us to use through their smartphones and whatever to contract with existing licensed livery, limo, or taxi services in Davidson County. It creates no new drivers, it creates no new vehicles, it simply allows you to use the internet or suitable technology to contract with them. This is not designed in any way, even though I think that, that some think, um, to hit at our cab service in this county. We need our cabs, we value our cabs, we ought to have more cabs, and I think the Transportation Licensing Board is gonna address that come January. But this creates an option for our citizens, who sometimes have trouble getting transportation in certain parts of the county, to have another valuable option. It also, I think, provides more fairness while clearly differentiating limo livery service from taxi cabs with the fee being higher it, it, but it is a fairer minimum. And keep in mind that what we're talking about is a minimum. The $9 is not the total fee for using a, a limo. In fact, I suspect you couldn't drive from here to the chair's desk for $9 in a limo. It sets simply the minimum. I would urge the council to support this as a step forward um, for both those that are visiting our community and for those that are living in Davidson County, and I request approval. Thank you, Councilmember Stein. Councilmember Bedney. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm the biggest nerd. I love the idea of having an application that will facilitate uh, this, but I am concerned about the impact this will have on the cab drivers. I hear what the sponsor is saying, that this won't have an impact, but I was wondering if there will be any room here to defer this until the Transportation Commission issues more licenses for the taxis, so there is more like a level play field. Council Member Stein. Um, no, I would respectfully uh, decline to do that because, I mean, the issues are, are separate. I mean, this, doesn't, this does not um, have anything to do with the number of, of cabs out there. Um, whether the application is used or not will affect new cabs or current cabs. Um, I think very clearly the Transportation Licensing Board have already taken applications, um, and they've clearly set in motion the notion of enlarging the number of cabs. But in, in no way are these two issues directly related, and I would urge this council to vote either for this or against this tonight. I think it's a, a basic fairness issue, both both to the livery limousine industry, but also this is a basic issue for those folks that visit Nashville, but more importantly, this provides a transportation option for folks that we know in this county that are having trouble getting service in certain parts of the county. And this option will help folks that are not only visitors, but are our constituents in our district. So I would urge this council to vote either up or down tonight. Thank you. Council Member Mitchell. Yeah, I'd like to ask the sponsor, uh, on this minimum, will this just be for the uh, people who go online and use the app for the minimum? No, the minimum applies, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Council members time. No, the minimum applies to anyone that uses a limousine or livery service. Okay, and for the, uh, the app owner or the company that's running the app, you know, a lot of these cab drivers, uh, limo drivers, there's a lot of fees and things that they have to pay to the city to, to, to work in our city. Will this app provide anything uh, to the city of Nashville, Tennessee? Will they have any registration or any, anything? You want to answer? Mr. Cooper. 
No, the uh, the individual companies and drivers with delivery services or the taxi services are regulated and will continue to be regulated and will have to pay whatever fees Metro imposes. The application services will contract directly with them and so whatever that fee structure they have um, in place will will only be between them. It will not uh, impact Metro. So we're going to change the business model, ladies and gentlemen, of these taxi drivers and, and these other drivers for hire that have been working quite some time on their current business model, and we're going to force that down on them, and they're going to have to send a check to someone in California who's going to benefit entirely off of their work, and the city is getting no benefit, and you know, we don't know what type of liability there could be with the, with this company. So, uh, you know, I've just seen some newspaper articles. I, I'm just kind of with uh, Councilman Bedney. I, I think we ought to just wait. Let's take this slow. Let's get more information about it. And let's see what the li Transportation Licensing Board does. You know, they've told a lot of these guys who are trying to get their taxi license over and over, we're going to expand, we're going to expand. Well, I think... Uh, uh, you know, the Licensing Commission Board and the administration, a lot of people seem to want this legislation. Well, let's see if they want it bad enough to expand and give some of these taxi drivers more chance to make a living. So uh, I would uh, encourage you, uh, sponsor, to uh, defer this at least two meetings and let's get more information. Councilmember Glover. This question, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This question is uh, actually, I'd like the sponsor to answer this, if he would, please. Uh, and I forgot to ask this, uh, Councilman Stein, I forgot to ask this in committee. This app is, is not just Nashville-based only. I mean, this is um, throughout the country. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And so, therefore, this is, our, this is something that people who travel on a frequent basis around this country, uh, this is something that they're used to using and actually would be beneficial. And if the, if the cab services and or the library services want to use, uh, use this app, then it actually is beneficial for people who are coming into Nashville that uh, may not be familiar with what phone numbers to dial. Would that be a correct assumption? Thank you, Mr. Chair. That is absolutely correct. I have spared the council. Those of us that are committee chairs have gotten um, thousands of emails in support of this from folks in Nashville, but also from those that have come into the Nashville airport and tried to use Uber. That's absolutely correct. It is, it is an app that will absolutely help those that visit us. But I would still argue to you that even despite all of that, um, the real benefit this is creating an option for people in Nashville to get where they're going as well. Um, and so I, but you're correct, and I actually should put this as part of the record, um, and I will deliver this to the clerk because all of these names should be in the public record. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. Thank you, Chair Harmon. I have a question uh, for the sponsor or um, Attorney Cooper. Does this company, um, Uber, have a history working with cab companies? Um, do they promote the limousine companies more than the cab companies? Mr. Cooper? This bill does not use the word Uber in it. I mean, it, it is, it is for, it, it just enables the technology to be used by whatever company wants to offer that. Um, Uber is the one that, that's been talked about the most. I do not know anything about their business model, um, but it's the, the bill itself is not restricted to any one company. So is it fair to say the app, the app that is being used here or that we're voting on, is there some kind of history in terms of them working with uh, limousine companies versus cab companies and how they promote one over the other? Councilmember Stein? My understanding is they will contract with most anyone. I suspect that they probably do more business with limousines and private services than they do with cab companies because there are applications that cab companies use throughout the country. I think it's called Halo or something that directly applies to cab companies. But this, this allows any number. I mean, I suspect there are other companies in the market and this will allow any number of companies to do business in Nashville. 
Thank you. Councilmember Dominey. Thanks, Speaker. I rise in support of this. This bill is about opportunity. It's opportunity for the, for the limo drivers, opportunity for the cab drivers as well, but more importantly, it's opportunity for residents in the 28th Council District that have to rely on services such as a taxi cab or, or a sedan to get to their doctor's appointments. They don't have the ability to drive because they're blind or have other impairments, and they require reasonable options to get to their appointments. Uh, us raising the, the minimum fee on the on the delivery services to forty five dollars has put them in a bind over the last few years, and this corrects that. And it's about opportunity for constituents to have choices, and I ask that you pass it. Thank you, Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. I have a question for uh, Councilman Stein. Just for clarity, could you uh, clarify that everyone that would have access to this application, that they will have to have licenses, they will have to pay, and they have to do insurance? Thank you. Thank you Mr. Chair, the, the, comp the, the cars, whether it be a company or individual cars that a company will contract with has to be licensed by the Transportation Licensing Board in Davidson County. I don't understand all of your question because anybody that can can sign up to use the application to hire the vehicles, but the only vehicles that are contracted with are existing Nashville vehicles that are already regulated by this government. Thank you. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you. So I just have one follow-up question. So there's no way that a gypsy cab could access this application? Councilmember Stein. Uh, uh, no, they, they are, they're prohibited from contracting with the gypsy cab. Thank you. All right. Councilmember Jernigan. Question, please. The previous question has been called for, and there is a second. Are there, um, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the previous question prevails. That brings us back to the motion for approval, properly seconded. And all those in favor, pl aye. please vote aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-606. Authorizes the Metro Arts Commission to accept donations and sponsorships to help cover the costs associated with the 2013 Americans for the Arts Convention and appropriates the funds to the Arts Commission. Councilmember Stein. Budget and finance approved 10 4, none against, and I move approval. There's a motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013 606, I'm sorry, 607 by Councilmember Gilmore amends the official street and alley acceptance map and maintenance map by abandoning a portion of alley number 384 and alley number 387 right of way. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works Committee approved BL 2013-607, 4, 4, and 0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Harrison. Traffic and, traffic and parking approved 4, 4, and 0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Hunt. Planning Zone and Historical approved 10, 4, 0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Move for approval. This motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And BL 2013-607 is passed. BL 2013-608 by Harrison, Stein, and others authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way drainage and temporary construction easements for a portion of 25 parcels located along Baptist World Center Drive in Haynes Mead Circle for sidewalk improvements. Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Committee report, please. Councilmember Stein. Budget and finance approved 10 4, none against. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works approved 4 0, four, four and 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning zoning and historic approved 10 4, 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for approval. There's a motion properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please vote aye. Those opposed? 
BL 2013 608 is passed. BL 2013 609 by Allen Stein and others authorizes the acquisition of right of way, drainage, and temporary construction easements for a portion of 14 parcels located along Chesterfield Avenue and Blair Boulevard for a sidewalk project. Councilmember Allen. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Stein. Budget and finance to prove 10 4, none against. Thank you, Councilmember Dominey. Public Works approved four, four and zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning, zoning, and CERC approves ten four zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Move for approval. There's a motion properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, and it, the bill is passed. BL 2013-610 by Bennett, Dominey, and Hunt, accepts permanent and temporary easements for a stormwater improvement project for various properties located along Saunders Avenue, Saunders Court, Edwards Avenue, and Virginia Avenue. Councilmember Bennett. Thank you, Pro Tim. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works approved 4-4 and 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning and Zoning Historical approved 10-4, 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Bennett. Move approval. There's a motion properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-611 by Matthews, Dominey, and Hunt accepts permanent and temporary easements for a stormwater improvement project for property located at 4300 Clarksville Pike. Councilmember Matthews. Thank you, Chair. Committee reports. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works approved. Four in support, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved 611, 10 4, 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Matthews. I'd like to move approval. Second. Motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, vote aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. BL 2013 612 by Council Members Moore, Dominey, and Hunt abandons 350 linear feet of an existing oh, eight inch public sewer main and easement and accepts replacement public sewer main and easement for properties located at 1400 14th Avenue South, 1441, 1441B, and 1443 12th Avenue South. Councilmember Moore. Committee report. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works approved for and support and support zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved 612, 10 against. Thank you, Councilmember Moore. I'd be glad to move this for approval. There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed, and, and the bill is passed. BL 2013-613 by Langster, Dominey, and Hunt. Abandons retained easement rights of former alley number 926 and former alley number 925 for properties located at 407 23rd Avenue North, 2300 Charlotte Avenue, and 2400 Charlotte Avenue. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works Committee approved for and support, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning zoning and historic approved 10 4 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Langster. Move for approval, please. Motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013 614 by Councilmember Allen, Dominey, and Hunt abandons 100 linear feet of an existing unused public sewer easement for properties located at 2907A, 2909A, and 2911A West Linden Avenue. Councilmember Allen. Committee reports, please. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works Committee approved. Four in support, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning zoning and historic approved 10 4 0 against. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. Move for approval. Motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. BL 2013 615 by Gilmore, Dominey, and Hunt abandoned 720 linear feet of an existing 8 inch public sewer main and 170 feet of easement and accepts replacement sewer main and easement for property located at 541 Spence Lane. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Committee reports. Councilmember Dominey. Public Works Committee approved. Four in support, zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved six uh, ten four zero against. Thank you, Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Move for approval. There's a motion and a second. Seeing no discussion. All those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed? 
and the bill is passed. Now we are on bills on third reading. BL 2013-568 by Councilmember Allen amends the Metro Zoning Code to prohibit LED message boards and digital display signs within the MUI, MUIA, ORI, and MHP zoning districts. Councilmember Allen. Committee reports. Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved 10-4-0 against. Thank you. Council Member Allen. There is an amendment. There is an amendment. I would like to move the amendment. There's a motion and a second on the amendment. Move for approval on the amendment. Wait, wait one second. Council Member Langster, did you want to be recognized on the amendment or on the bill? Uh -huh. On the amendment. Mr. Cooper, could you explain the amendment, please? There you go. The amendment carves out an exception for the bill for signs that are over 1,200 square feet in size that are located in the MUIA zoning district and are um, along an arterial street within the urban zoning overlay. So it's, it's r really applicable only to one sign that I'm aware of, which is the, the sign at the um, intersection of Broadway and I guess that's 21st West, Avenue, 21st, West End right. Broadway split Yeah, division. Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. And Mr. Um, uh, Speaker Pro Tim, I'd like to be recognized on the bill. All right. Well, when we get to it, just press your button again. Uh, Councilmember Allen. So brief explanation. This was a, um, I'll have to speak to the bill as well. This was a bill that was brought forth because of a, a gap in the existing LED bill, it currently prohibits LEDs in all the residential and agricultural districts and allows them in commercial and industrial. Um, but for whatever reason, MUI and ORI were omitted for those. So the bill was originally created to fill that gap. There was some discussion um, about uh, adding the mixed use into that um, and dealing with uh, an exclusively commercial area. And for that reason, this one amendment was made. So I would like to move the amendment with that explanation. There, there's a motion properly seconded on the amendment to the bill. Is there any discussion, further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Those opposed, and the amendment is adopted. Councilmember Allen, you're recognized right. on the bill. And I would like to move the bill. Also, just to explain, the companion is uh, that we inadvertently omitted ORIA, and that is a companion bill that will come up shortly. So with that, I move for approval. There is a motion and a second on the bill. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Cooper, uh, all of these zoning districts that were mentioned, do any of them include churches? Can a church now apply for a LED sign? I'm sure there are some churches that are within within these districts, but I, I don't I don't know for sure specifically. Um, under under this bill, they would not be allowed to have an LED sign if if they were within one of those districts. So, a ch the only way to find out is for the church to make application or, or to call planning or how can we discover if they're eligible uh, for an LED sign? Well, they would need to, to check their zoning and, and call planning and see if they fall within one of those districts. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Langster. Um, that was discussion. Seeing no further discussion on the bill, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. BL 2013-585 by, er, by Council Member Anthony Davis changes 5.92 acres from CL, MUL, SP, RS10, OR20, CN, and R6 to MUNA and MULA zoning for various properties located along Maxie Lane, McGavick Pike, Oxford Street, and Riverside Drive. Council Member Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, committee report. Council Member Hunt. Planning zone approved 10 4 0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Davis. I would like to move approval, please. There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed.
BL 2013-586 by Councilmember Westerholm makes provisions to the Eastwood Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District to 2.45 acres for various properties located along Eastland Avenue and Scott Avenue. Councilmember Westerholm. Thank you. Committee reports? Councilmember Hunt. Pan and zoning approved 10 4 0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Westerholm. Uh, thank you. I would move to defer to the first meeting in February with a brief explanation. Gentleman moves to defer to first meeting in February, properly seconded. Councilmember Westerholm. All right. Uh, for those who may be here for this particular bill, this is one that is was well, agreed to be tied to another bill that is a rezoning. This is an extension of a conservation overlay district. In order to get the timing right for third reading, uh, the other bill, which is the zone change, will be up for third reading on the for, at the first meeting in February. So this motion is, uh, or this deferral to, to that meeting is to get them on track so they move forward on third reading at the same time. Thank you. And with that, I would renew my motion. The motion is to defer to the first meeting in February, properly seconded. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the deferral, please vote aye. Those opposed, and the bill is deferred. BL 2013-587 by Councilmember Baker changes 0 0.7 acres from CS to SP zoning for properties located at 4900, 4902, 4904, and 4906 Tennessee Avenue to permit up to nine residential dwelling units. Councilmember Baker. Committee report, please. Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved 587 10 against. Thank you. Councilmember Baker. Move approval. Second. There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-589 by Councilmember Anthony Davis changes 1.89 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 1505 and 1507 Porter Road and a portion of properties located at 1516 and 1528 C Riverside Drive to permit up to 28 residential dwelling units and up to 6,000 square feet of commercial space. Councilmember Davis. Thank you, Chair. Uh, committee report, please. Councilmember Hunt. Planning and zoning approved 589, 10-4-0 against. Thank you. Councilmember Davis. I would move approval, please. Motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion. All those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-590 by Councilmember Allen amends the Metro Zoning Code to prohibit LED message boards and digital display signs within the ORIA Zoning District. Councilmember Allen. Committee reports. Councilmember Hunt. Planning and Zoning approved 590, 10 against. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Councilmember Langster. Thank you. Mr. Cooper, would this bill prohibit a church in my district uh, from applying for an L LED and possibly being approved if I voted for this? If you, if you had a church that was owned ORIA, -I yes. Uh, do you know off the top of your I head? I do not. Churches, you don't. Could could a church fall under that zoning designation? It, uh, churches are, are pretty much allowed anywhere, um, so I mean it, it it is feasible. I don't know if anybody from planning would know. Do you want to me? Huh, Mr. Bernhardt? Well, there are permitted use in the ORI dash A. Yes, there are permitted use. There, as as John said, there are permitted use in almost all zoning districts. Which would include, Mr. Chair. Well, Actually, Councilmember Langster is recognized. So, uh, Mr. Bernhardt, this would not prevent a church from applying for an LED sign if I voted for this legislation. This legislation would uh, not allow any business in an ORI, a zoning district, to have an LED sign. And so not knowing if the church is an ORI. Thank you. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. I, I, to answer Councilmember Langster, if it's in a commercial district, then it then would be allowed. It just depends on what type of district it's in. We can look at that later. So with that, I would move for approval. There's a motion and second. 
for approval. Councilmember Glover. Just uh, for, for quick reference, I mean, if we do pass this, we're, we're, we're moving this forward, and Mr. Bernhardt, if I understand you correctly, if this is passed, then there's no coming back. Uh, I mean, am, am I incorrect on that, Mr. Bernhardt and Mr. Cooper? The, the intent of the bill is not to allow LED signs in areas that are zoned ORI-A. It would take a zoning code amendment to allow those in the future. Councilmember Hunt. Yeah, uh, maybe Mr. Bernhardt may I say this. What kind of businesses are in OI? Tell, tell us something about what is, what is, uh, they don't know what ORI is, what kind of business is in it, why is it, you, why you can't do it in that particular district. So we need to know about that. Basically, uh, ORI stands for Office Residential Intensive. So the primary uses are residential uses and office uses. It does allow some other complementary uses. A church would be allowed, but primarily it's office and residential. Councilmember Holliman. Just to follow up on Councilmember Hunt, uh, Mr. Bernhardt, it's fair to say that office residential intensity is is often in areas that are immediately adjacent to residential neighborhoods. Is that is that fair to say? No, that is correct. They are they tend to be transition between a commercial neighborhood and residential, so they're often back up to residential R or R S, yes. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Councilmember Scott Davis. Um, Mr. President, um, if you could move on to our next bill, can we come back to this? Because we're currently looking up the zoning right now. No. Can we just No, I'm that that would not be in order. We can't do that. No. Councilmember Langster. With all due respect, Mr. Chair, could we not move this bill to the to the foot of the third reading since we're we're under consideration of the bill. We have a motion and a second for consideration of the bill. We are on discussion and that motion would not be in order. Councilmember Claiborne. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call for the question, please. The question has been called. Is there a second? second. I hear a second. Properly seconded. All those in favor of the previous question, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. We'll need a machine vote on the previous question. It'll take her a minute. <laughs> I think that's who we got, yeah. Madam Clerk, has every member voted? Please announce the results of the vote. 15 for, 17 against, one abstention. The previous question fails. Is that right? Okay. That puts us back in the queue. Council Member Tenpenny. Thank you, Chair. Um, I as I look at this bill, I, I mean, it, it, it looks okay from the front, but when I look at it more on this bill, to me, it's about one LED sign. It's on the corner of Broadway and West End up there. And I, no, just for the LED. Just one second, Mr. Cooper. The other bill that already passed right. on third reading took care of that sign and all of the other zoning districts that were to be included. This is actually a housekeeping technical companion bill to that other bill just because ORIA was inadvertently omitted. And the ORIA, I've, what Councilmember Langster was saying, if, if the churches are not in there, then they can't apply for an LED sign. I don't know, uh, I think I just kind of let the other bill slip past, but um, 
at this time I'd, I'd call for deferral of this bill because I can't I can't go for it for discussion on the motion to defer. It's a one meeting deferral. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there is a motion properly seconded for, excuse me? One meeting. For a one meeting deferral. It, properly seconded. We're on discussion of the deferral motion. If you would like to be recognized on the deferral motion, please raise your hand. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Harmon. I, I would like to just back up with with my overall explanation. The existing sign regulation that is already on the books deals with LED signs in two categories. Under the commercial and industrial and shopping center designations, there's a whole category vegetable, I mean alphabet soup of, of zoning designations within those categories where LED signs are allowed with certain conditions. In the agricultural and residential and mixed use categories, LED signs are prohibited. This has been on the books for a number of years now, but for whatever reason, there were a few categories that were left out. As it stands now, if churches are in mixed use, with the exception of these, if they're in mixed use, residential or commercial or light commercial districts, then they are treated as the same properties that are in those and LEDs are not allowed. If they are in commercial zoning districts or industrial, which they can be, then LED signs are allowed there with those same prohibitions. So they are simply treated the same way as every other property is. This does not create any special new thing for to deal with churches. That that already exists. Councilmember Allen, you're going to have to address the deferral. I, I'm sorry. I, and therefore, I would say I think it's not appropriate to defer because that's not necessarily relevant to this ORA discussion. This is just a housekeeping because we left it out of the other one. I would... Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Councilmember Langster. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your all... Um, understanding the plight that I'm in. I have St. James Missionary Baptist Church. I think it's in the 600 block of 28th Avenue North. And they have come to me just like Councilman Hunt's church, Temple Baptist, came and wanted, um, they want an LED sign. And at this time, they are not permitted to have it. My question is, Mr. Bernhardt, if if I vote and other members vote for this piece of legislation that Councilmember Allen said we can come back and look at, it, am I gonna? Is it gonna knock them out the out out of being in order to vote uh, to apply for the? Am I gonna have to come back and suspend the rules and ask for all of this when we can do it now on the front end? Thank you. I'm, I'm gonna allow this because I think it may speed us along, Council. Uh, Mr. Bernhardt. Uh, the property in question at 628th Avenue North is not zoned ORIA. Uh, it's actually zoned RS5. Which means? Which is residential single family. And which means they can apply for? They cannot. They cannot. That's not permitted today. This, this bill has no effect on them whatsoever under their current zoning. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Still on the deferral motion, Councilmember Holloman. Passes. Councilmember Moore, did you wish to be recognized on the deferral motion? You can just go back to Councilmember Allen. All right. Councilmember Allen. You're on. I'm on. At the time, my button wasn't working, so she was trying to aid me to, to speak. I, I think I've said everything I need to. Um, I would I would again ask that we vote for the, vote on the deferral and then vote on the bill. I would recommend against the deferral. All right.
Council Member Tenpenny on the deferral motion? Yes, on the deferral motion. It's just like the motion that we passed earlier with that LED sign. I just think that the businesses that are up and down in that district should have the same opportunity as what we passed for the larger sign earlier tonight. And I don't think it's fair fair play for for one and not for the other. So that's why I'm calling for the deferral tonight. Thank you, Councilmember Banks. Call the question. There is no one else in the queue on the deferral motion, so if we could spare ourselves that. <laughs> All right. We're on a one meeting deferral motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? No. The noes have it. We are back on the motion to approve, properly seconded, and Councilmember Tiger. John or Rick, can you all explain exactly what an LED sign is to us? It is a light emitting diode sign, which is made up of small little bulbs that that Does light it flash? Up. Is it brighter than other signs? It's not supposed to be brighter than other signs. Does and it, it move? Is supposed to Does remain it scintillate? Does it flash? Does it scroll? Does it, it do any of those things? It is supposed to remain static for eight seconds at a time. So it is the current technology, more energy efficient sign that just every eight, 10, 12 seconds changes a message that is less bright, supposedly, than current signs. Under the existing code, I just, I just think council members need to understand what we're talking about for a church, whether they're in a residential or commercial district, it really doesn't matter. Th this is the technology that allows the message to change in an indescribable moment that is less bright and more energy efficient. So we just need to keep in mind, I think this bill that Council Lady Allen is appropriate, but at some point the whole issue of this terrible notion of LED signs that all of us have on holiday trees and all of us are going to um, is not the, the evil thing that it's made out to be. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Uh, I stand in support of Council Lady uh, Allen's bill. She's worked uh, for several months on this bill with planning. And once again, she says she's just trying to close the gap. And it does not stop anything new. I know that there was a concern about the, the church. And the church would fall in residential already, uh, Council Lady Langster. So that wouldn't be allowed anyway. This simply just allows that those particular buildings that are close to residential, they would not have the flashing lights. So I stand in support. And I would ask others to uh, vote in support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further members in the queue, all those in favor of BL 2013-590, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. BL 2013-591 by Stein and Dominey amends Chapter 10.20 of the Metro Code. Council Member Stein. Move approval. Motion and properly seconded. All the committee reports are in. All those in favor of BL 2013-591, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-592 by Council Member Westerholm amends the Metro Code to allow weekend beer deliveries yeah. for special events. Council Member Westerholm. <laughs> Move approval. There's a motion and a second. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed? Uh, seeing none, the BL 2013-592 is passed. BL 2013-596 by Claiborne, Tigard, and others authorizes the Director of Public Property to accept a deed from Wilson Bank and Trust to Metro Government for use as part of the Cumberland River Greenway System. Council Member Claiborne. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, since this has been approved by planning and also by budget and finance, I move for approval. 
There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. Bill 2013-597 by Gilmore, Stein, and others authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way, slope, and temporary construction easements and property rights on 32 parcels located between 4th Avenue South and 8th Avenue South for use in the Division Street Extension Phase 1. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Sp uh, Speaker Pro Tem. I, let's see here. What do I need to do? I move, move for approved. approval. With a brief explanation. There's a motion. Second. Properly seconded. Council Member Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. I think you're doing a great job tonight, by the way. Um, I just wanted to quickly say I think that this is a wonderful addition to the Sobro area, and it'll provide more connectivity. And I appreciate Public Works working with the business owners over there. And as we move forward, I um, would encourage them to continue to work with the business owners. And I move for approval. Thank you. Motion properly seconded. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed. And the bill is passed. Bill 2013-598 by Langster, Stein, and Dominey accepts a contribution in the amount of $60,000 from the residential group via WEV LLC for signal improvements at the intersection of 31st Avenue North and Long Boulevard. Councilmember Langster. Thank you, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. With all committees reporting, I move for approval. There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please vote aye. aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. Thank you. BL 2013-599 by Councilmember Gilmore abandons a portion of alley number 114 right-of-way in easement. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker Pro Tem. Move for approval with a brief, uh, brief comment. There's a motion properly seconded. Councilmember Gilmore. Thank you. I just wanted to wish everyone a, a happy holidays. This was my last bill. Thank you. Move for approval. Motion second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the bill, please say aye. Those opposed, and the bill is passed. BL 2013-600 by Dominey and Hunt adopts the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance map and the geographic information system street and alley centerline layer. Council Member Dominey. With all committee reports in, I move approval. There's a motion properly seconded. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor please vote aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. BL 2013-601 by Councilmember Barry readopts the Metro Code to include supplemental and replacement pages containing ordinances of a general and permanent nature enacted on or before July 2nd, 2013. Councilmember Barry. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. There's a motion properly seconded. Seconded, Councilmember Barry. I wanted to just see the horror on some of my council members' faces that I was going to talk for five minutes. Actually, I would like to just move approval. And, and, and to all a good night, yes. <laughs> Motion properly seconded. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please aye. vote aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the bill is passed. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. We're adjourned.